Have you ever wanted to do something like this or maybe like this quickly and easily in Illustrator? Well, you're in luck because today I'm talking about a technique that changes everything. I've been designing for a little over 10 years now, and it wasn't until recently that I discovered the offset path tool in Illustrator. If you're not familiar with that, or you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's fine. That's what today's all about. And if you already know about this tool, I'm sure that your life is already much better because things are easier. And it's not really intuitive to find this thing. There's not really a shortcut key for it. And it's buried, in my opinion, buried in a menu where nobody would ever find it. So today I'm gonna to walk through an icon I made, typical screen recording thing. We're gonna talk about what I did. And I'm gonna take a moment to pause and talk about the offset path tool in the middle of making this icon so I can explain exactly what it does for you. So let's get into it. All right, so to begin, I'm laying the groundwork for a heart icon. If you're not familiar with how to create a heart this way, there's actually another video I'll link to on my channel that talks about making a heart icon, but that's not the focus of this video. There's something much more powerful and awesome in this video I wanna talk about, and that is the offset path tool. If you're not familiar with the offset path tool, just get ready. That's, that's all I'm gonna say is get ready for something awesome. Okay, I'm gonna pause what we're watching right now and go through a little bit of an explanation of exactly what this is and how you can start using it. It's really important that we understand exactly everything this tool can do and that screen recording goes by so fast, it would be hard to actually completely understand why this is a useful thing to start learning. So here I have a heart icon. It is a little bit more of a complex shape than something like a circle or a square. With a circle or a square, you could easily just scale it to different sizes and it would fit within itself or outside of itself and there wouldn't be too big of an issue. But let me convert this heart to an outline so that you can see everything I'm talking about. If I make a copy of the heart and I try to scale it in on itself, you can see there's a bigger gap right here than there is on the sides. And definitely in the middle, there's almost no gap going on. In fact, the outlines are touching each other. And this may not be what you want. You may just want to have a second shaped heart on the outside, evenly spaced away from the main heart. That may involve a lot of work if you want to make sure it's precisely uh, separated from the main heart. You may have to redraw a new heart and kind of do that process over and over again, or use something like the blend tool and create these different objects and then have to convert them into actual objects. And I won't go into all of those methods, but it gets a little tricky. And even if I scale inward with this part, you can see that the same thing happens. There's a bigger gap here, less of a gap here, and definitely a smaller gap in the middle. So offset path tool takes all of this headache away. I'm gonna to go to object. Well, first I'm gonna select the heart. <laughs> then I'm going to go to object, path, offset path. And you get this cool little menu here. We'll start off with a positive number to kind of show you exactly what this does. So if it's 20 pixels and I preview that, you can see it's creating this outline on the outside of the heart and it's evenly spaced all the way around. If I hit okay, it actually becomes its own new object. You can do whatever you want to with this. It is exactly like the object you copied, so I can even fill it if I want to. All those nice things that you can do with a normal shape. If I go back to the offset path tool again and use a negative number, like negative 20, it creates a copy inside of the heart, which is extremely useful. In the continuation of the screen recording coming up, you'll see that I actually use this in the video as well. And what I do with it is actually, let me do this for you really fast. If you remove some of the points, you can actually create this kind of like highlight inside of the heart, which, you know, maybe you need to fine tune that or whatever, but it's very helpful for doing different things like that. So keep in mind that when you're making these copies, you're also giving yourself some freedom of creating any kind of shape 
within the heart or within whatever complex shape you have. Again, if you're doing something like circles or squares, it's really easy to just copy those and shape them inside of themselves. They're not going to have this distortion look where some edges are different than others. But when you get into more complex shapes like this, the offset path tool is a major, major time saver and is so helpful. All right, so back to the icon. I am making some copies of the hearts. I'm creating like this lives remaining type icon, sort of like you'd see in an older game, maybe even current games, but uh, this is along the lines of that adventure game, medieval time fun theme I've been working on. And this is the last one I'll show for a while. I wanna take some time working through this set, but I thought showing the offset path tool would be super helpful if you don't know about it already, because it changed so much for me. Some of the techniques I'm using at this point are some of the things I've talked about in previous episodes already, like using the Pathfinder tools and, uh, you know, working with HSB to figure out your colors. So a lot of this is somewhat repetitive if I go through all of it, but um, now I'm moving into working with sort of how these are, are structured and how they look. And I'm about to do the highlights. This was such a tough part. This is another example of the offset path tool working in my favor so I can make an intersection with the uh, like creating a highlight inside of the icon. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but making this offset path helped me to create a shape that would allow me to trim it and create an exact highlight that's shaped with the icon and not have to you know, go through figuring out how to draw that out by hand or something. Getting the colors right on this part for whatever reason was kind of a struggle for me. I wanted to make sure that the whole icon didn't look kind of bland and uh, boring. So I was working through these, these colors, trying to figure out how to make them work well. Sometimes highlights can be a struggle because you're trying to figure out how can I make them look like highlights without making them look too contrasted where it just doesn't look right. And so working through a bunch of these colors uh, took quite a while. <laughs> this this video, as most of the others are, is sped up. So this took uh, some time to get right. And now I'm creating the shadows. I wanted to make these kind of have that, you know, depth effect to them a little bit where they feel like they're these glass hearts with life inside of them. And as you lose that life, they drain out. So uh, again, using the blue overlay technique I talked about in the tower icon video, uh, just kind of how you can create shadows and make those work for you. So I got it right with this heart. And then I also copied that to the other heart and started making this, uh, them the actual colors instead of just overlays and creating actual shapes instead of something that I have to keep figuring out and messing with. And if you export at SVG at any point, you'll lose any of those overlay things you have going on, like the, uh, the blending modes and different things. So it's always smart to do this color thing where you actually sample the colors from what you've done and make it an official object with a specific color attached to it. And that's what I'm doing here. So that was it for the offset path tool. If this is your first time finding out about it, I hope this was a life changing video. I know that's a little over dramatic, but seriously, this thing changes your workflow tremendously and it's created so much flexibility for me. And just, it's easier to make things and feel like you can do stuff and get things done faster instead of trying to work through problems along the way. That's a lot of what building proficiency is all about is lowering that boundary of what you can do and what you can explore and therefore getting so much better at producing things and not worrying about that part of it. So hope this was helpful for you. I'll see you next time. Okay, look, look, there's, there's, a, there's a lamp behind me just hanging out there. I had to take my sticker board down for this video. That's how important this video is.